Conservative Education Secretary Justine Greening. She also founded the Social Mobility Pledge, a campaign to help disadvantaged students achieve their potential. Justine Greening, good to see you uh, this afternoon. Why is the academic performance of white working class children so low compared to their peers, poor children from other ethnic backgrounds? I think it's a combination of factors. I think it's partly that the schools they've had in their local areas need to get better. But I also think the challenges that local schools face mirror challenges outside the schools. So for example, there often aren't higher skilled jobs in the local community. So maybe aspiration levels aren't as high as in other places. Um, often parents maybe find it harder to support their child's development. For example, they may find it a lot harder to sort out things like work experience, give careers advice, all, all of that wider development that children and young people need to really be able to thrive in school. And I think one of the ways we can address this, and I was very conscious of this when I was education secretary, I grew up in one of those areas, I probably would have been one of those students that that was suffering, if you like, through the decades, as they put it on the committee of underachievement in a way. But I very much focused on this as Secretary of State for Education. And we introduced something called opportunity areas, which was all about recognizing if you want to lift results in schools, it's more than just working with teachers and pupils. It also means you have to work outside of schools. And that was what opportunity areas that I introduced were doing. They were working outside schools, bringing in, for example, the local authorities, local communities, the NHS, for example, local businesses. And they were really having that whole community push to improve education. They were long term pieces of work because obviously they were focused on tackling long term problems. But actually, even after a few years, we're seeing the rates of improvement in literacy, numeracy, going ahead of the national picture. So they are working. And I think perhaps one of the most powerful things we can do to respond to this report um, is to have more opportunity areas in more of these communities that too often get left behind on education. And this group is the biggest group of disadvantaged pupils. We've talked a lot about diversity in terms of ethnicity and in terms of gender. Do we need to give more focus to social class as well? I think... It does seem to be a correlating factor in relation to education achievement, but the bottom line is talent is spread everywhere and therefore we need an education system that can really unlock it. And I think we need to recognise that the challenges, though, that are perhaps are faced in Doncaster are different to the challenges in Scarborough, which will be different to the challenges in Stoke, which would be different, frankly, to the challenges in places like Somerset or Cambridgeshire, where there are also underachieving parts of our education system. The Opportunity Area Programme worked because it allowed those local teams working with the DfE to really have very tailored plans for their own local areas. And that's why they were able to have, I think, some real results, even in a, a short period of time. And even though they are actually designed to be much longer term pieces of work, can I ask you about this row that is emerging about the, the use of the term white privilege in this report? Uh, Robert Halfen saying that it contributes to systemic neglect. It implies uh, collective guilt. He said, how can you say to a single parent in a bedsit that she is someone of white privilege? Labour, uh, though, saying that this is pitting white against black and this is culture wars. Look, I think we do need to be careful to not get into a really divisive debate on language and labels that isn't really going to move us forward in terms of solutions. The reality is, as the committee recognises, these challenges have been there for decades, as you said at the beginning of this piece, well before we had labels like white privilege. What really matters to parents, I think, is what we are doing about the challenges and how we are going to shift the dial on improving education outcomes. And this is a government with levelling up uh, as a key national priority, but education has to be at the heart of any levelling up strategy. And so for communities where education outcomes aren't good enough, then that has to absolutely be at the heart of a levelling up strategy in those particular parts of the country. But I think what we saw from the Education Select Committee report today, importantly, was 
this isn't just a problem for the north. Some of the areas they highlighted were places like Kent and East Sussex. They were places like Oxfordshire, Gloucestershire, Worcestershire, Shropshire. So this is a national problem that requires a national response on levelling up. But I think for many communities, levelling up is about improving education results. And I think, I hope, I certainly hope that when we get towards the autumn in the levelling up white paper, that it will finally announce a wave of new opportunity areas, which is something I certainly had planned had I been in education for longer. And it is a problem that goes back many decades, but it's a problem that has been compounded over the last 18 months, hasn't it? If we're talking about the attainment gap, the pandemic has only widened that. Indeed, and we know that the children and young people most affected by the school shutdown are these very young people who were already behind. And it's why I hope that the government will also revisit its plans on the COVID catch-up fund that it announced and what it's going to be doing in terms of giving schools the resources they need to catch up. But behind that is this much broader challenge of the fact that the gaps were already there. And I think maybe the further point to make is this isn't just about resourcing. Actually, what the Opportunity Areas work showed is it's about being able to work outside of education silos, for example, at the local level, getting people like the NHS involved. In places like Bradford working together, they discovered that hundreds of local children just had the wrong glasses prescriptions. And that was one of the reasons literacy was poor. But it's also about mobilising local businesses to give more work experience, to be in schools talking about careers, so that aspiration in these communities is high and so that young people really have a sense of why studying, working hard at school matters because of what it can lead on to. So these are complex issues, but I think there are solutions out there. And I hope that the government will really reach for what works as it looks towards the autumn and the levelling up white paper. Justine Greening, thanks very much indeed.